Well, Bernie, another week like this one, I'm afraid we'll be washed up. You can shoot a couple deer in these wide open spaces tonight. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Fine, you can't make any money in a place like this anymore unless you sell booze. People get tired of dancing with each other unless they're drunk. I'll not make a speakeasy of our club. Alice and I give them a swell show, good music, and the best food in New York. And if they want to get liquor, they can buy it somewhere else. That's just what they're doing, begging your pardon, Mr. Fine. That's all right, Benny. I know you mean it well. You and the boys had better go home now. It's past three o'clock. Okay, sir. Good night to you. Good night, Benny. Good night, fellas. Good night. Got dressed quickly tonight. I've been over those figures again. And certainly two thousand in the hole. And not a customer tonight. I'm reading your pardon. You're Eddie Farrell, aren't you? Sure, that's me. What can I do for you? Well, don't you remember me? Johnson from Chicago? Oh, sure, now I got you. You used to come into the Momart to the red-headed dame while I was dancing there. Well, that's right. Byron, I have something important I'd like to discuss with you. Well, go ahead. Shoot. I'd like to talk to you alone. This is my partner, Alice Vernon, Mr. Johnson. And anything you have to say to me, you can spill before her. All right. Byron, I happen to know that you're having pretty serious business difficulties. I guess that's no secret. I can help you out if you will do a service for me. Oh, yeah? First, I've got to take you into my confidence. I am in the liquor business. Oh. A bootlegger, eh? Perhaps, if you want to put it that way. But I operate on a rather elaborate scale. Well, Mr. Johnson, we don't plan on selling any booze in our club, even if we have to close up tomorrow. I'm not trying to sell you any stuff, son. Here's what I'm driving at. This envelope contains a considerable amount of money as well as important instructions to a man named Chigas. I want you to deliver it to him. Why don't you take it yourself? Chigas has never seen me and it's highly necessary he never does. Thanks, but I don't want to get mixed up in any bootleggers walk. You won't get into any trouble, Farron, if you keep your mouth shut. I promise you that. Now you deliver this for me and I'll pay you $5,000. $5,000? Gee. Don't do it. It doesn't sound right to me. I know, but that's a lot of money, honey. How did you happen to pick on me for this, Mr. Johnson? Because it's a highly important job. And I knew you could be trusted. And because you can use the money. I'll say we can use the money. But we can get money some other way. Oh, say, sweetheart. With 5,000 berries to spend, we can put the club boulevard over. Make it the talk of the town. Please. I'll do it, Mr. Johnson. That's fine. Now, Farron, here's $2,000. You'll receive the balance as soon as you can show me a receipt from Chigas. His address is on the envelope. You can depend on me, Mr. Johnson. Say, okay, where do I see you to collect the balance? I'll meet you here tomorrow night at the same time. Well, that's okay. Good night, Farron. Good night, Mr. Johnson. And good luck to you. Good night, Miss Farron. Oh, darling, I'm afraid. I'm awfully afraid. Oh, don't be scared, kitty. Why, these big bootleggers say... Almost any price to have their plans carried out. No harm will come to us. We're lucky, that's all. Gee, I'm glad I was always pleasant to that Mr. Johnson. Who's there? That's Eddie Farron of the Club Boulevard. 
most exciting place in town. Well, boy, I don't crave no excitement. Get the hell away. Well, if you're bum diggers, I've got a letter for you from a Mr. Johnson. Welcome to the old homestead. I was told to deliver this to you and ask no questions. Well, take a tip from a wise guy and don't ask none. <laughs> don't worry, buddy. I won't. Here's a receipt. Will you sign it for me? Why, certainly. Say, I'd smoke a hen if you ain't the parochial what runs that nightclub. I seen your picture in the papers. Did you? Was I in costume? Worse than that, you was in tight. A cancer. My God! Well, that's all right, isn't it? Sure, that's all right, Percy. You are from the dogs down. Well, there's your receipt. Hey, Ferdinand, be good to your mother. Five grand. <laughs> Not so bad. Get Whitey Harris and get him right. He'll be back in town on the 18th. right -o. I'm paying him full for the job, because I know you'll do it good, flatterer. But no double crossing, or my men will take you for a buggy ride. Johnson, a nice guy, Johnson. I wonder who that bimbo Johnson is. Yay, too. Well, that was always my lucky day for cooking again. That was fine work, Farron. Well, here's the balance of your money. Thanks a lot, Mr. Johnson. But remember one thing. Keep your mouth shut. Forget that you ever had anything to do with that little transaction. If you don't, you're going to find things pretty tough for you. I get you, Mr. Johnson. This is what I have for you. What is it, a new road step? Oh, no. Wait till you see this. What do you think of that? Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Eddie, who is that big giveaway man over there? Gee, wife, that must have been a pretty good shakedown. You certainly know how to make little girls happy. Why, it's a pleasure to be trimmed by a beautiful girl. You great, big, gorgeous man. Well, honey, that's Whitey Harris, the biggest gambler in all New York. When he patronizes a club, you can depend on it. It's going to be a success. Oh. I'll stand for no more shakedowns by the cops. I'll go down to headquarters and spill all I know, and there'll be hell to pay. What's the matter, Whitey? Is anything wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. Let's have another drink. Everything is going fine now. Will you mind me now? I, I mean, if you can spare the time. Well, maybe I can spare the time. Mr. Ferry, uh, Mr. Ferry, 
please, okay, this guy's sick. Folks, I hardly know what to say, but well, Alice and I were married today. Well, well, well congratulations. Well, well, wait, wait a minute. We want you all to help us celebrate this happy occasion. The lid is off, and everything is on the house. Well, 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 Just a minute, man. We want you. Well, what's the matter? Are we being pinched for having a little fun? That's right. Well, you're wanted down at headquarters. But what's it all about? The Whitey Harris murder. Oh, gee, I don't know anything about that. Well, tell that to the inspector. You can't just you. Why, why? We were just married today. Well, that's your tough luck. Come on in. Hey, Eddie, don't worry, darling.
Frank Jacob, uh, step forward. Hello, Chief. Uh, take off those cheaters. Frank Jacob, arrested by Detective Garrity of the 10th Squad. Men, I want you to pay particular attention to Frank here. And believe it or not, he's widely known as the Great Lover. Let be over, boys. It's a gift. A silence. His specialty is in making love to middle-aged ladies. Then either blackmailing them or otherwise defrauding them out of money or property. He's been convicted twice. Spent five years in San Quentin, six in Danamora. And now he's due for a very long stay away from the beautiful ladies. Take Jacobs back to the pen, Hennessy. Well, so long, boys. I see you in court. Thomas Barton, step forward. Take her hat off. Thomas Barton, known as Smokey Joe, arrested by Detective Thomas of the 8th Squad. Here is a great copper. This is the kind of work the department is proud of. Here is a confessed murder. Spent three years in Sing Sing, escaped by killing two guards, taken in an east side tenement while wounding one of the detectives who captured him at the risk of their lives. A dangerous man to be at large. It's the chair for him now, sure and a good job. Take him away, Anderson. Edward Farron, step forward. Edward Farron arrested by Detective Sharkey of the 10th Squad. chance to come clean. You've got no record with us, but we've got the dope one. Up to three weeks ago, the club boulevard was a losing proposition. We know that you and Alice Vernon were about broke. Then suddenly, you seem to have plenty of money. The place grew prosperous. Where did it all come from? Then Whitey Harris is murdered. Some bum jigger squawks you were the one that gave him the money for the job. Now, we don't figure you're the man to stage this, Baron. And we can't find that you had anything against Harris. Who's behind it? We'll give you the break. It's no use, Miss Vernon. Farron is a murder suspect, and therefore cannot be admitted to bail, even if you could raise a million dollars. But he didn't have anything to do with it. Why, Eddie's never done a crooked thing in his life. I'm very, very sorry for you, my child. But the law knows no sympathy. Perhaps your partner, Alice, will. We'll make her. Send for Alice Vernon. My God, no. Keep her out of this. You can keep her out. We'll take care of you both. We want the man higher up. There never was a cooler murder pulled than this one. And we're going to get the wise guy who thinks he can get away with it. If you don't want Alice dragged into it, come. Come, Tyron. Give us the man. Here's your man. Money. I didn't 
not with instructions to kill a man. And I say, get an ambulance for the boy. This clear thing, he's free. Come on, boys, give us a hand. We've been a long time getting you, but now we've got your right. Would have been shaking down Whitey Harris for thousands of dollars for protection of his gambling houses. Only you got too greedy. Whitey got tired of playing with you and was about to spill all he knew to headquarters than you had again. Yeah, that's my guy. You used Farron as a shield. Knowing the jigger squealed, the kid would be the ghost. You've been a valuable man, Park. And I never thought you'd disgrace your department by pulling a trick like this. Oh, I'll cut out the speech maker, will it? We'll make you pay for this. Snap the cuff on. We found the man we want at last. In our own line. Well, bust out crying, will it? I'll take him away. Gee, honey. I feel awful low. Why, darling? The doctor says you're getting along fine. The club is doing bigger business than it's ever done. And everyone in town is calling you hero. I know, but here I've been a married man for three weeks now. And I haven't had my honeymoon yet. You are so wonderful.